As you start to get a solid feel for your veteran's biographical details, such as where they grew up, what schools they attended, and what their family life may have been like, you'll then want to seek out general historical information and secondary source material to help you fill in the gaps of the narrative, because the specific details you find on each veteran won't be enough to tell the whole story. Why is that? Your veteran was part of a wide world, just like you are. Local, regional, national, or even global events beyond their control affected them, just as they do you. Your choice of activities, jobs, or colleges is influenced by your family, friends, and personal choices, but also by factors much larger than that. The selection of stores you shop at, for example, is affected by big abstract ideas, like the global economy, but it still filters down to things like where you can buy the shoes that you like. Learning what was around our veterans helps us understand them. Let's take a look at some ways to build out the story through secondary sources. These are books, articles, or sites that compile and summarize knowledge from first-hand pieces of data, or primary sources. For example, we know for a fact when Abraham Lincoln gave a now-famous speech at Gettysburg because there are photographs of it, newspaper accounts written that same day, and copies of his speech written down by people who attended. These contemporary pieces are primary sources. The book Lincoln Comes to Gettysburg, written by Bradley and Linda Gottfried in 2021, is a secondary source that examines the original event by aggregating and interpreting the primary sources, and probably other secondary sources too. Secondary sources are helpful because the research in these books and articles gathers multiple pieces of evidence together. This is why every historian doesn't go back to original documents for every detail of everything they ever write. Other professional historians have already helped them along. Much of what you know directly about your own veteran will come from primary sources, because no historian has written a book about your veteran yet. But the context that helps you set the stage for those primary sources will probably come from other historians. This can get confusing, so let's take a look at an example from the project by investigating the life of veteran Merhej Saab. When this researcher examined Merhej's background, she discovered that his family immigrated to the United States from Lebanon. Without context, that's just a piece of trivia. Why does your family live where they do? Why have they moved in the past? What inspired Merhej's family to cross an ocean to live in the United States? Examining the Saab family requires doing some research into the political and economic factors the family probably faced in Lebanon. The researcher consulted several secondary sources to get a better idea of the pressures facing Lebanese families in the early 20th century when their nation was undergoing political upheaval. This background helped the researcher understand why the Saab family's occupation as merchants was a familiar practice for many Lebanese immigrants and helped them become a part of their new American community. Robert Anthony Tony Washington is another veteran whose biography represents an important opportunity to bring general research knowledge in to provide critical background to a time period. Tony's dedicated service to his country in Vietnam followed an early life in a segregated town where African Americans were a very small minority. By doing some general research on Tony's town of Piedmont in Mineral County, the researchers found that prominent historian Henry Louis Gates Jr. also grew up there and wrote a memoir about the black experience in Mineral County. Gates and Tony Washington were the same age, and that discovery led the researchers to find that the two boys were in the Cub Scouts and some sports together. Having access to Dr. Gates' own research and writings provided important context to the way Tony likely experienced life in a rural West Virginia neighborhood during the Civil Rights era. For one final example, Janet Sue Ward was a Navy nurse during the Vietnam War. Female veterans, especially nurses, can sometimes be more difficult to fill in the details because fewer books are written about them. After primary sources indicated she was stationed on Guam, however, these authors were able to write a great deal about what the island was like during her stay. How did they do that? Secondary sources, of course. These two military publications provided a big-picture view of what was unfolding on Guam during Janet's tour, even though we didn't have a primary source from her, such as an oral history or journal. 
every veteran's story will be different, but without the help of secondary sources to contextualize the individual data you find, you'll never know which parts of your veteran's story are unique or broadly representative. The only way you can make the story truly theirs is to look at the big picture and find your veteran in it.